All right, cool. And uh, I'm gonna try one more time in case I messed up something before. Okay, go live. Okay, see better. Never mind. So, welcome everyone. Uh, let's go to our uh, meeting notes. I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Does a, is anyone here new who would like to introduce themselves? Uh, first time joining or second time joining? All right, no worries. Um, so, okay. So if there are any issues that you would like to discuss uh, that are untriaged or you've been waiting for a response, uh, definitely add it uh, uh, in front of your name or uh, speak up now so we can talk about it. Uh, Today is, uh, I think the earlier meeting in the different time zone was uh, canceled because of flu attendance. So so I don't see a lot of updates there. TUC meeting was uh, good. That happened earlier, no, last week actually. And uh, we gave some good updates. Uh, there was some interest, uh, Justin, on the research blog uh, initiative or proposal. Uh, so people were asking like, is this, uh, does this project need a working group right now? And I think my standard response was uh, open to like discussing more was uh, generally we go with proposal then a project and then if project takes a much broader scope then we can always consider moving it as a working group so but happy to be wrong and talk more about it uh, and uh, in terms of project updates yeah anyone uh, working on any of these projects if they have any updates uh, let's uh, hear it Um, I guess I have a few things on the assessment slash security pals. So um, we're at kind of a funny state with the flat car and um, cube edge assessments. Um, the flat car folks finished the entire process. We finished our assessment of them. They agreed to everything. They liked it. And then they're like, oh, but we want to clean up our documentation before we add it to the repo. Hmm. And so it's like um, they've already crossed the finish line, but now they're like kind of backpedaling and falling on the ground, you know, in front of the finish line almost. I see. And so we're really just waiting for that to happen, which is kind of weird because it looks like, oh, like, why is this, you know, why is the security assessment process taking so long? Well, you know, they, they want to clean things up, which is somewhat a credit to them, but I also think, um, you know, I'm, I'm at a loss what to do other than to continue to nudge them. So if someone else has some suggestions or wants to reach out, please feel free. Um, Cube Edge is in almost the opposite place where they did a bunch of work prior to their assessment and they basically have their self-assessment done but it's split across two documents that are not in the normal uh, format and way that we'd usually look at things and so on. And so I just reached out to say like, hey, look, we're ready to begin this assessment process. Um, I just wanna talk to you about like combining this stuff together or you know, figuring out if you want us to submit like pull requests to something because it's currently in Markdown on GitHub or whether you want to plop everything to, into a Google Doc so it's easier for us or whatever. And I've repeatedly pinged them on Slack and on the issue tracker and everything. I had nothing, uh, no response. Um, but And I also went to uh, KubeCon China a few weeks ago and actually met one of the people there. And they were like, yeah, we're kind of busy with stuff and haven't really been thinking about... Uh, this, but we're, we're like going to get to that quite soon. And yeah, don't worry, I'll follow up was at least my impression of the conversation and have had no follow up. So uh, it's this like um, sort of project disappears. Like we got all our ducks in a row. They said they were ready and I, I don't know what to do. 
to push that along. So um, if you know people in either of those projects and want to prod them, uh, that'd be helpful because we'd like to just, you know, uh, cross the flat car off of our list as completed because it is completed. Um, and we'd like to have uh, CubeEdge actually be able to start um, because they've done a tremendous amount of work. Right. Okay. Yeah. Don't, I honestly don't have any good ideas. Uh, if anyone else has anything, I'd love to hear them. I don't know, maybe someone with the the tag security chair bit uh, can can like message and ping them or something like you or Marina or uh, someone could do that. And that might have a different impact, especially if you ping through a different channel. Mm. If you ping like, you know, through. I don't know. Yeah, maybe that will sometimes those things kind of help. Yeah. Um, I guess I should also say for security pals, um, we're getting closer to starting that effort, uh, have been in some contact. I talked with Chris Anacek about some of the details at, in China. Um, and, you know, we've been doing the prep work to do that. And we're looking at somewhere like 40 or so projects that we'll do that for. Um, so uh, we're currently going through and trying to figure out for each of the graduate and incubating projects, like if, it, you know, if there's any reason other than the fact that they've done an assessment that we want to drop them out of the list. Um, and I'm open to suggestions about that. Like I'm, for instance, um, the Tough project doesn't have an assessment in the same way, but it's been really heavily assessed in basically exactly the same way that you would do for this assessment. In fact, some of the assessment process is based off of the stuff we did for tough. Um, the same, you know, to a an extent that's also true for Spiffy Spire and so on, but Spiffy Spire are sort of officially checked in the repo and tough isn't. So it feels a little weird to have a student group go and do that assessment for tough when it's you know, I, I don't know. Um, when we've, we've done like basically this process over and over and over again. Um, and other things like Kubernetes, I think are too broad to do that, uh, to set a couple of students on and just say like, oh yeah, do a security assessment of it. It's like just, just too much to bite off. Um, so I'm open to feedback if others have thoughts about where we should draw the boundaries about which projects we should and shouldn't be assessing in in the CNCF. So regarding self-assessments, and I apologize that I, I joined late. I took my minute to find the Zoom link. Um, regarding the self-assessment specifically, we are incentivizing that during the security slam this month. And we have a course... Uh, that we published with uh, LFTC, Linux Foundation's training. Um, so we have a course on security self-assessments uh, because we are trying to incentivize these being done by by all of the projects. That's the that's the idea from, from our perspective. Do you know who has them underway? Because um, like our approach to coming at this was, you know, get students to do what's hopefully a decent job of them and show them to the project. And then it's often easier to get people to fix something that's that's like a little bit broken than it is to get them to do something from scratch. Yeah. Uh, well, that, I mean, this might be a really great time to talk about it because yesterday we did the kickoff. Um, Mike and I and uh, Rago did a little webinar and we kind of announced all the metrics and stuff. I should come on camera. I'm talking, sorry. Um, and the uh, yeah, the work has only just started, and there's a lot of different things that we're incentivizing, and so it could be that if you have uh, any of these uh, students or anybody that's wanting to help out with these self assessments, if they're doing it in the recommended format, and we have a course that just like does a walkthrough, like step by step by step by step, or there's the documentation, there's the markdown in, in the in the repo, 
if it's matching that format, they might be helping the projects enough to get the prize. Like there's a uh, hundred dollars for each different badge. And there is one badge that is specifically for self-assessments, which means that whoever within the project helps do the self-assessment could get the award at the end of the month if it's if it's merged in. And I imagine that if your students are the ones doing most of that work, and maybe students is the wrong word, I'm sorry if I misheard that. Um, but if they're the ones doing most of that work, it might be might be some nice little incentive for you to 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 continue doing this that, that you're already doing and uh, recommend them over to the Security Slam channel. But also if they just like want to reach out to any of the projects in CNCF, like literally any of the projects that are doing it, they want to like reach out and and ask them like, hey, can I can I make this contribution for you as part of the Security Slam? It's happening this month. Could be a way to kind of like break down some of those conversations a little bit, a little bit faster, a little bit easier, maybe. Mike, is this all the same format and stuff that's in the book or is this like a different thing? On on that end, I, I actually don't have any information about uh, uh, like well, what the actual LF one is, the LF training. Uh, it's tr straight out of the tag security repo. Um, so if you go to tag security repo, I think there is. Okay, a, okay, that that's fine then. Assessments guide. Good. Okay. Okay. Self assessment. Oh, they are they are using what you just in and everyone else wrote up looks like so that's good. I just just wanted to yeah that was what I wanted to confirm when I was hearing about all of this because yeah that would have been an interesting outcome had that not been the case okay that's good yeah. okay um, so looks like perfect. this okay yeah um so okay and to fill you in um. You know, I'm teaching a security class that has like a hundred and something students in it, and I'm going to be breaking them into groups, and they're going to be doing self assessments like through the Security Pals project for CNCF projects. And my our, our initial intent was to basically take all the graduated and incubating projects first that did not already have an assessment, and to do them unless the projects opt out or we declare them unsuitable for some other reason. And so um, I need to talk with you to know more, a little more about this effort. I am, I believe there's no problem with you paying the students for completing this, but it, um, I need to double check that because it's a little weird because they're getting course credit for it. And um, like, I can't pay the students for doing work that they're supposed to do. But I think since the LF is external, I think they can pay. Um, I and, just want it's it's like a competition award, right? So you so only one like if you have three people on the project that are th like three students in a group project doing a self assessment, like there's only gonna be one gift card that's issued as a prize. Yeah, we'll we'll need to work something special out for this. Um, they're already gonna get swag from Chris Anacek. Um, so maybe they're ineligible, but we do something like take the money that would have gone to them and then the top X students get um, to go to a KubeCon and have their expenses covered or something like that. Um, we, we just need to like figure something like that out. But I'm also more worried that a project is then, you know, through your efforts, going to start something, and then a student group is going to start, and they're going to find that, you know, there's a yeah pizza party. Um, they're going to find that there's uh, a lot of duplicative effort, and so GitHub, GitHub issues will probably help a lot with that. If your if your folks are notifying the project that you're doing the work then I think that'll that'll help because we have that issue all the time across all the projects, yeah. right? Like two people are wanting to work on the same feature. One more thing might be worth clarifying is timelines for both. Looks like Slam will end at the start of KubeCon and Pals will actually start after KubeCon. Is that right, Justin? Yeah. So, oh. so it may not be an issue. In fact, you may have a bunch of projects that have completed or done their thing and then we can cross those off our list, that would be totally fine. Um, Clears that up in a hurry. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, that's, it sounds like an interesting effort. I hope it's successful and I'm looking forward to hearing more in future uh, tech security meetings. Yeah, definitely. I plus one to that. Uh, Eddie, please let us know like how that's going. And uh, thanks for doing this as well. Uh, it's going to be really helpful. Uh, there is also a chance, I think, because it's time uh, constraint that the whole self-assessment maybe doesn't get over by the time security slam ends. And that could be an opportunity where potentially students could pick up where they were left off on some of the projects. Uh, not sure like if that will happen at all, but that's just a thought. Okay, cool. Uh, and yeah, if there is a way, like Justin said, to have a list of like, oh, actually no, what Eddie said, to have a list of like GitHub issues or some way of tracking like what projects are being uh, uh, done as part of Security Slam, I think that will help uh, for Security Pal as well, where instead of working on like Five what five hundred in safe projects or whatever the number is, we kind of like are able to shorten the list and uh, be focused on that. Part of our part of our incentive is that it needs to be in the designated location in the tag security repo. Uh, so so that that should help with the. You can just look and see if it's not in there. It's not done. Okay. Um, if we yeah. if if I I'll keep in mind if. If some folks are talking about it, like, hey, we're working on it, but they don't finish. If if I see any chatter like that, I'll try to I'll try to keep in mind to just like uh let you guys know if that is something that that is seen. So yeah, yeah I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah, because in open source, like many of us are volunteers, so wasted work is like extra bad. So if we can leverage anything that was done instead of just letting it where it is, that would be more useful. But yeah, we'll see. Like just in completely up to you. Like if you want to like pick up from the projects or like just do some completely different projects, I'll leave it to you because you know best like how you want to do that. Yeah, I think we'll glance and see. But in general, if they've done a lot, we probably won't want to pick it up because we want there to be a relatively even playing field for the students yeah. to start with, um, if at all possible or yeah. But we'll we'll make judgment calls as need be. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Uh, anything else from let's say supply chain or controls or map, uh, white paper or zero trust. All right. Cool. So any general stand up or check ins from partner groups or things that are coming up that might be worth discussing. All right, okay. So in that case, let's go to the fun stuff, which is security hub. So there were a lot of questions for last couple of months, I think, where is security village? Are we going to have security village? What is it going to look like? And uh, because of all the logistics that need to be taken care of, we were kind of working in the background with CNCF, all of the CNCF tag leads uh, on security tag uh, to figure out what would work. There was a lot of good feedback from the community as well in terms of what worked, what didn't work last time, uh, what could be better. And uh, part of it was also like maybe the naming could be explored more which is actually why, uh, not the only reason, but actually why Security Village is now Security Hub. Uh, it's going to happen from day one of KubeCon, uh, continuing to day two and day three. So nothing on day zero, which is what we were used to a couple of KubeCons back where we would have Cloud Native Security Con. There is gonna be a Cloud Native Security Con uh, as a standalone event sometime in 2024, if I remember sometime in June. Uh, there is a lot more time for that. So CFPs will open in due time. So, but just a heads up in terms of, yes, it's happening. Uh, there is a back to security hub. There are basically three sort of different tracks that will happen. 
the good news uh, as part of one of the feedback was it was hard to have one single space where uh, all the security village stuff was last time so in this case we actually have it in one place and uh, yeah thanks john june 26 27 seattle is when cloud native security con is and uh, this time what we have is basically what we are told like uh, is after the keynote uh, sessions are over, as you <clears throat> walk up stairs from there, immediately after the stairs end, there is a room 471, which uh, I believe would be divided into two rooms, A and B. And that's where most of the security hub things will happen. Uh, there are three tracks to it. So uh, one of them is our favorite and very popular track that continues to happen, which is CTF. So day one would be a CTF warm up. Day two would be actual CTF throughout the day. Uh, the second one is more about uh, learning about uh, cloud native security, sharing your knowledge, collaborating with people. So as part of that, we have uh, on day one, uh, the last, which would be actually the last day to submit unconference CFTs. And the actual unconference will happen on day two, day three. Uh, I think one of the common questions we got was, can we submit unconference sessions today instead of waiting for day one? Uh, and the answer is yes, you can. Uh, so here's the link for that. If you click on it, it will basically open a GitHub issue in tax security repo. And you can put your name of the session here, keep the unconference uh, header as is or prefix, then describe your topic, uh, what would be benefits to ecosystem, any blogs that might be relevant to the talk you're giving, and then any other information that you want to share, I think that is also welcome. So this is how you can submit. Only thing I think you will need for this to happen is a GitHub uh, account. Uh, and you can continue to submit from now until uh, the end of day one, which is when we will be able to choose three sessions for day two and three sessions for day three. Um, the choice is definitely something we'll, cons uh, we'll consider on several factors. Uh, but if you like some sessions that you see in the tax security repos submitted on day one or in the next few weeks uh, please add your emojis or plus ones or comments saying like this is an interesting session i would like to see that so that will give us good insights into like what do people want to see so and encourage everyone who is pres pres want to present or wants to attend it to do that uh, day one because the cfp will still be open we actually uh, picked uh, three sessions from security track CFP of KubeCon, which would be presented in day one. Uh, they are prefixed on SCED as security hub. Uh, you can see that. And uh, that will happen in the afternoon after keynotes. Uh, immediately after keynote, and Eddie, you can share more. Uh, there is a security slam award ceremony, uh, which is... I'm going to mark end of security slam, as I understand, and you can find more folks on from uh, tax security as well. So I'll pause for now. Lots of information, uh, probably a lot of questions brewing up. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll wait and uh, see if you have any questions and then we can talk more if needed. Yeah, John, go ahead. Yeah, I had a quick one. So <clears throat> if we won't know until seemingly like the end of day one, beginning of day two, if a talk would be accepted or planned for day two or day three, how would we handle conflicts? Um, so like, I, I don't know, in my situation, I assume in other people's situations, there's a few more rigid timeframes that are already booked out for like that Wednesday or Thursday. Or is there some sort of accommodation on the timing of it? Uh, yeah, so we have three slots on day two, day three. Uh, hopefully, the whole afternoon is not blocked for folks who might uh, be end up selected for unconference. Um, but 
I think we are limited by those three slots only and both of them would be in the afternoon. So if it's selected, for example, and there is a schedule conflict, definitely reach out to us. Uh, we'll try our best to like accommodate uh, based on the schedule. Uh, but like if it's a really hard conflict where both the afternoons are blocked, I think then that might be a bit difficult. Sure. Is there a place in that, uh, was it an issue, I think? that issue template that says, you know, timing accommodations or anything like that, that might be a good idea if people are going to submit ahead of time. Yeah, that's a good idea. Actually, yeah. Uh, if you submit one, uh, definitely make that as a note in your description saying I would have, if you select me, I would be only available at these time slots. That will actually help a lot. Uh, and might be worth uh, adding it in the template also, but we'll see like uh, if we get that. A lot. My coupon schedule is filling up fast, uh, John. Okay. Uh, uh, Michael has his hand up. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Uh, so yeah, I think on on the unconference thing, I think it's also probably yeah worth, um, you know, really highlighting that I think based on what we had talked about was this is quote unquote you know unconference. It's not really intended as like a B sides kind of thing. It's more intended of like a hey, like, let's sit down and chat about a thing. And, and hey, here's an interesting topic that doesn't really make sense as like a full fledged talk or whatever it is. Um, and then separately, I think one of the things that that I think um, I know I'm interested in, and I'm sure other folks are interested, like, how do we make this successful? What can we do to market this? How do we shout this from the hills? Is there anything we can do to to make sure it's spread far and wide? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Like, that's also one of the intentions of this meeting being focused on security hub is to get all of you familiar with this so you can actually help us uh, spread the word and say like hey this is happening this is what it is if you have more questions go to tax security channel and i think that will really help uh, i expect some marketing in cncf socials coming soon i think today or tomorrow where this will be announced more uh, if you have registered for KubeCon, there should be an email that went out last evening that uh, had a quick blurb about Security Hub as well. So hopefully people are reading that. But yeah, um, we're going to need all the help we can get to make sure people uh, find this interesting, find this helpful and are excited about it and also know about it because it can be hard with so many things going on like this is happening as well. All right. Uh, any more questions on what we discussed so far? Um, so I think one other thing, right, is is also given that the security hub is kind of a, you know, I think, and it's sort of talked about there a little bit, yeah, as an informal space, right? I think one of the things I think we're 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 looking to help foster is um, just for people to chat about security, we'd even love to have uh, project maintainers who are interested in in various things and interested in collaborating with other projects. I know one of the things in the past that's come up has been is a couple of projects we're asking like, hey, I, I hear about this like tough, how do I get tough set up in my repo? I don't know where to get started. I don't really have a ton of time on, you know, as a, as my day job, but here, since I'm here at KubeCon, if I could just talk to somebody like, oh, okay, cool. You know, I think um, anything we could also do to help foster that and, 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 and push for that uh, be helpful. And, and I know with some of the stuff that Eddie is doing with the security slam, there's also a lot of areas for us to potentially collaborate and on, you know, whether it's for what's going on right now or for um, uh, uh, in the future. Yeah, I plus one to that. I'm going to just quickly check chat and then uh, address what you mentioned. Uh, oh, this is a Kubernetes community issue. Interesting. Yeah, that was, um. so that's something, that's actually why I was asking, because I think it's Thursday afternoon for half day. I have it blocked for this contributor community meet and greet for the working group policy group. Uh, and I just assume other people may as well. And this also seems very similar to what Michael was just describing. As far as like, uh, hey, we're here in person, ask a question. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, I see. So yeah, so going back to what Michael said, one of the things we're gonna experiment this time around is uh, it's hard for people to get hold of each other when there are thousands of people in one big building. 
so we've we've requested cncf to create a slack uh, handle which would be uh, limited for the kubecon week only and uh, that would essentially have all the security tag leads inside that so essentially if you use the handle we haven't figured out the name but meet me at security hub something like that and then if you use that handle uh, we'll all get tagged and to using michael's example like some maintainer can use that tag and say hey i've heard about tough i really want to use it i've never had time to find it find out how to do it i yeah. see some of you work on this yeah uh, is there an opportunity we can collaborate and talk about it so then once we get that message then any one of us who is more familiar with that can like say okay uh, let's meet at the security hub uh, and this the does this, this, this does this time work for you and then that we will kind of figure out what time works and then we meet there there will be uh, cncf has promised at least that there will be some informal space uh, to sit down there with uh, coffee uh, available very close by so you don't have to look find find coffee look for it and then come back and then you can basically sit there talk about it we have also requested for whiteboards if possible uh, i don't think we have a full commitment on it yet but that is essentially the plan so once the handle is created uh, we'll definitely share on our tax security channel but encourage you and your friends or anyone joining if you have exactly the kind of questions that michael had or even if somebody is a new person to the community wants to know what the heck is cloud cloud native security how is it different from kubernetes and things like that i think you can use the handle for that as well so okay one more chat discussion we should make a small handout to give to folks staffing the project pavilion that could be a great way to let project maintainers know oh yeah okay oh like so, some sort of like a small one pager saying like what do you think security hub well, this is this is what you can expect in security hub this is what you can do and here are some instructions yeah i think that would be good we are plan we have asked for posters uh, about it some qr codes that point to the bitly link uh, but this is another good idea uh, we have also asked uh, this to be kind of shared as part of all the security track sessions at the end where it will be like a standard slide for everyone saying if you want to talk more or like join the discussions on cloud native security go to security hub near this room but yeah i think the handout is a good idea uh, any chance uh, uh, michael or anyone else on the lead side can ping or reply back to lindsay asking for that if it's possible at all sure is is there i can do that is is there a ongoing thread that i could just be pointed in yeah. pointed to or so should i just Yeah, yeah, she sent us an email this morning on the tax security leads uh, mailing list. So, yeah, if if you don't find it, just ping me later, and then I can figure out that with you. Yeah, I might actually be inadvertently not on that list. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay, let me see that. All right. Cool. Uh, so yeah, good, good suggestions, good questions. Uh, hope this is all making sense, and hope this is better than what folks saw or expected in Security Village. Uh, we'll share again, like when this comes up in CNCF socials on uh, Slack. Uh, request everyone to share it as well, because the more people know, the more interesting this will get, really. And uh, we like the any event is what we make of it. So. let's make sure like we people who want to attend something like this and want to join can do that all right uh what's the time okay we still have some time any thing else that comes up on this topic any other topics people want to discuss uh let's do that now otherwise yeah we can end early i'll stop sharing until people think of something
Okay, cool. Uh, Eddie, um, I, since we have time, uh, would you like to share more about like uh, security slam in general and like what it's what can people expect? What is it going to be like uh, on day one of KubeCon uh, when it's uh, wrapping oh, up? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the actual awards uh, conclusion ceremony thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so the plan. So we've so it's thirty five minutes is what we've got on the schedule. Um, and the idea is that we're going to bring up, um, as far as like the, the, the core content, uh, it's going to be myself doing kind of like a recap of like, Hey, thanks guys. This is what we did this year. Um, and, uh, we're going to bring up the, um, one of the guys who, who last year we did an impact maintainer award uh and so impact contributor whatever we called it um and uh there's a, a guy named justin marquis that did a lot of the um a lot of the work that ended up getting used by all the other projects uh like folks were all like borderline copy pasting his work throughout the for when it came to um uh, automating some provenance stuff and uh and so we're going to bring him up this year and just kind of talk about like just kind of like how this year is different from last so he's going to talk for like five minutes and then um and then we're going to give out the awards which are going to be like little picture frames with like hey this is what you did uh and uh we're going to have if anybody does all five of the badges all five of the, of the goals for the project it's their their frame is going to be like gold plated um uh, and then i think we're i think we're going to have socks on site and then we're going to get people's um, requests for like for shirt sizes and hoodie sizes uh, for whatever swag is like it, we're gonna order it and just like ship it to people um, but yeah so it's it's pretty much gonna be the flow of that um, giving out the awards is gonna take a little bit of time because people are gonna like walk up and be like take a little picture um, and then uh, and we still need to figure out who's gonna like actually be handing out those awards because it'd be fun to have somebody like more high profile doing it um, from my side uh the highest profile person that we have is really big in the Apache community, uh, Brian Fox, but he's not like the most well-known person in the, in the CNCF community. So trying to figure out uh, who we can get up, that would kind of be fun to, to, to hand out the awards if possible, but that's, yes, there's a few things that are like pending that we'll figure out over the next month, but that's, that's roughly, roughly what, what we're thinking for that. Yeah. That sounds really cool. Like, uh, uh, I think awards are always memorable for everyone. So, and would be a good start for KubeCon as well. Uh, yeah. 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 All right. Cool. Thanks for doing this, uh, Eddie. Uh, anything else from anyone? So, PJ, um, this is Radna. I wanted to chat about my idea on uh, Gen AI and cloud native um, security, right? how cloud native technologies can help prevent some of the Gen AI threats that come to an enterprise. Um, I don't know if there's interest in the community. Um, I know Gen AI has raised a lot of interest in the industry. Everybody is talking about it, but from an enterprise perspective, there are a number of threats that we need to worry about, specifically you know, employee data uh, or confidential or highly confidential data that these Gen AI LLMs can potentially have access to. And then uh, if the provider gets compromised, then they can end up in places where we don't want to. Um, so there's a bunch of research that needs to be done on this topic and maybe a white paper we could do. Um, but I want to see the interest from the community first. And if there is interest, I'll create an issue. And then um, also we should explore use of Gen AI in several of our aspects, right? Like uh, software supply chain security, you know, um, how can we utilize the intelligence that we we get, right? Or any kind of AI uh, capabilities there. So, yeah. very any good, thoughts? Very good idea. Uh, Michael has his hand up. I'm guessing it's related to some of the fun stuff on Gen AI. He's been working on with. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. Um, well, so there's some of that, uh, but but the 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 more um, uh, pertinent thing actually is that uh, so. I, I recommend, and I don't know exactly who it is, but there is an LFAI cross-cutting group that they have set up where the idea here is since there's a lot, you know, now that, you know, AI ML is becoming super, super popular, 
Um, one of the things is is there is uh, there is an a yes um, as was posted by John there is an AI ML security group under the OpenSSF, but even the OpenSSF is trying to work with a broader LF cross cutting group that might be yeah it might be the L yeah the LF AI and data group. And the idea here is is not to like, you know, is to sort of say, hey, how can we stay coordinated, right? Because OpenSSF maybe is focused on general AI. And then as you had mentioned, Aranda, like L uh, uh, CNCF can be focused on the cloud native aspect of the security, right? Like what can we do to approach it? You know, if you are in Kubernetes, if you are in the container world, if you're in the cloud native world that, you know, zero trust and all that great stuff, well, what can we do there? Um, but yeah, I do, I, there's, uh, at least from the LF side, they, they've, they've been very interested in trying to um, see how we can collaborate on, on that. Um, and then also how we can pull in really the experts in the space, because obviously it's an evolving space. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, just wanted to just throw that out there <laughs> as well. No, that's, yeah, great. That... that's great. Yeah. Um, so how can we collaborate? I mean, um, first of all, within this community, do we have any interest? And then we can talk about collaboration, right? So what are we going to contribute uh, is what my, um, that is what I want to get um, an answer on from the, the, the folks on the call, right? Yeah, I mean, I think, it, I personally think it's a it's a great idea. Um, the the thing I would just kind of uh, temper it a little bit with is, is my, at least my opinion is in 90% of AI, like it's just the same as security. No. It's just cybersecurity. It's just like, Hey, data security, right? It's just the same as data security. There are certain things that obviously AI is doing that's a little weird, but the same way with like when you're training an AI, it's no different really than running a build. Uh, and and people really shouldn't consider it that that differently. But I do think that you know even educating that point is 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 also a huge piece of it. And at least from my end, I, I I'm interested. I, I don't have the time to to work on it, but but I am interested in it. So, so Michael, um, so to that point, um, I don't want to discuss with you, um, since you brought it up, that uh, scanning, uh, you know, through the pipeline. Um, as far as LLM scanning tools um, and um, addressing the code piece of it, um, but there are other threads, right? Uh, how do you keep your LLMs um, that you are developing, proprietary LLMs, they should be encrypted at rest and all that fun stuff, right? So, so an overarching layer of controls just for AI uh, pipelines uh, will be great to have as well, right? And then not everybody's developing their own LLMs today. They are using third-party open source where uh, there are there's already a risk database of publicly exploited LLMs, right? Uh, how do you validate the supply chain of all that? So it is the same, but still the aspects and tooling could be different for AI. Um, that That's what a Delta addition we can do to our artifacts, I would think. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think there's gonna be some differences, but I think it's in that sort of 10% or whatever it may be range, right? Where I think the majority of the tools are probably gonna be the same and probably should be considered the same. Um, but actually one of the things that you brought up, which I think is a really, really good one. And there's a good, uh, there was a good talk at OpenSSF day. And I'm blanking on who, who had given it, um, but it, they actually had talked about uh, the, the uh, open source, um, oh, sorry, not LLM scanning, but like, hey, if I'm building an LLM, I should build an LLM similar to how I would build a container, right? Like I should be running a build. I should be generating, you know, something akin to an SBOM. I should be run, you know, generating a salsa attestation. I should also be signing that LLM. And actually one of the things I do think is really interesting, um, and I'm, I'm blanking on the, the talk, I'll, I'll try and find it and, and post it in chat, but one of the things I found very fascinating was somebody at, at OpenSSF Day in Europe a couple of weeks ago had given a talk on um, the state of open source AI. And they actually found an inverse correlation that the number of stars you had in um, for your, for your uh, AI focused project was inversely correlated with how secure it was. That actually um, the more popular a project was the, the, the worse its security generally was, um, at least as far as AI. And they found significant issues with like single maintainer projects that had tens of thousands of stars with no, uh, you know, essentially nothing that the security slam, no security slam practices, no security.md. Some of them didn't even have a, a valid license. 
um, you know, and those sorts of things. And, and also it was really unclear where some of these LLMs were even coming from. Uh, it was unclear if the LLM that was in the GitHub releases actually reflected the code that was in the project. There was a, there's a lot of issues there. And I think that to me is, is also uh, extraordinarily scary because obviously since it's super popular, everybody's like, oh, the hot new thing is, you know, large language models, AI, all these AI projects. But they found that besides like some of the really, really popular ones, like TensorFlow is one of the best as far as security goes. Um, you know, PyTorch is also up there. Uh, besides those, a lot of the other ones that are coming out now to kind of go on to the big boom, uh, they found that the security on them is, is really quite poor, that they don't use branch protection rules and all that good stuff. Um, and, and so that's definitely something to, to, I think from our perspective, yeah, I think that sort of thing is, is, is really important to, to get ahead of because uh, the same way that with LLM scanning, right? Like a lot of folks are like, hey, I'll use this new AI, open source AI tool to scan my software. But it's like, is that project that you're using to scan your software actually any good? Is it malicious software? It's really hard to tell um, in, in the current state of things. Yeah, and then the threat intel and uh, that you can integrate into the pipeline for LLMs, right? Um, so, so it seems Michael is interested. And what about the other folks? I mean, should I create an issue on this so we can work on something? I I think issue makes sense. One thing I would also love to hear from others uh, as well as you, Aradna, is there are two aspects where there is scope to like meld those two things together, uh, Gen AI and cloud native security. One is like, how can we use Gen AI to improve cloud native security? So like security, LLMs for security in some ways. And the other one is how do we secure LLMs in a cloud native way? So it might be worth like hearing what you what your thoughts are in terms of which ones do we want to focus on? Do we want to focus on both or like uh, something in between? So that what I call it is AI for cyber and cyber for AI, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Um, those two yeah. aspects of it. Um, the interesting thing is um, for all our projects, we need to start thinking, start thinking um, AI, right? Um, anything we, we publish from here on, in fact, anything we have published, we should have a disclaimer on that saying that we haven't addressed any of the AI threats and any of the guidances we have published so far, right? Because uh, it is becoming quite prevalent. Everybody is using AI now, right? All the tools, um, all the co-pilots, you know, any GitHub co-pilot, uh, Azure AD co-pilot, and you name it, uh, they're all going to be prevalent in the enterprises and what risks they pose to the enterprise, um, it's unclear, right? Or it's not very widely talked about. So um, I, I think all our artifacts that we have, we should say, have a disclaimer saying that we have not, we need to update these with AI guidance, right? Even the cloud native security white paper, uh, we should update that. Um, but but yeah, I'm, I'm open, I will create an issue. And then from there, we can prioritize it based on the interest of the community who wants to work on it. And if we have enough uh, momentum there, we can publish an artifact. Yeah, sounds good. And John has his hand up as well. Yeah, on the topic of LLMs for cybersecurity, one of the things I've been thinking about lately is using LLMs to assist security assessments uh, and threat modeling exercises. And so that's something that I've been poking around at myself. And I wonder if we're going to release guidance, if we should also be dog fooding this sort of stuff and potentially adjusting or updating or even just experimenting with the use of new tools for the security assessments as the as new ones pop up, uh, and you know I've I've been having lots of different thoughts about using LLMs just to take in uh, one form of information and translate it into another, like making it a formal threat model from the notes that we did in the security assessment or something along those lines, um, making it a, I don't know just a different format, right? Uh, as well as feeding different inputs or considerations. Like what about taking the self-attestation form, passing it through an LLM and say, what concerns would you have after looking at this? Those sorts of things seem extremely obvious to me. And I've, I've done them a few times now, just at my day job. And interesting, right? Some, a lot of times it's more reminding you of things that you weren't going to bring up, that you would just forgot to bring up. 
Um, so you get a little bit broader and sometimes it's a deep thing. It's like, what, what are you talking about? What is this thing? Oh, let me go look it up. Um, and so I, I just feel like it would be interesting for us to dog food things as well as provide guidance. That's such a brilliant idea. I love it. Uh, I wonder if you would you'll be able to like present something, some of those experiments that you had conducted uh, in some one of our tax security meetings in the future. I think I would love to like learn more about that. I can't commit to that, but maybe I would love to. Uh, yeah. Just sanitizing information and stuff. I'd have yeah, to see. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to totally up to you, but yeah, it's super cool and very interesting and very relevant to the tag. So yeah, whatever you can share, great. If not, that's fine. All right, cool. Uh, we got five minutes more. Uh, anything else, last call for topics, questions, and things we want to chat about? All right, uh, cool. So, saw so your messages by Arana, by Michael. Uh, and yeah, if no more topics, see you in a few uh, days from now, the May next week. Uh, and uh, look, be on the lookout for more Security Hub stuff on tax security. Share it with your friends, share with your colleagues, share whoever might find this interesting. Submit unconference talks if you have thought about it. No big preparation needed. It's it is fine if you don't have full KubeCon level slides. Just uh, we can just have a frank discussion about the topic. Might that might be worth it. So with that, see you everyone uh, next week and uh, stay safe until then. Bye.